FE Electrical and Computer Exam as well as the PE Power Exam cover a broad range of topics. You are dealing with everything that you've learned essentially in your four years of undergraduate entering, ranging from mathematics all the way to software and everything in between. When it comes to PE Power Exam, the focus is on power systems engineering, but as you know, Power systems engineering itself is a very broad topic. One of the commonly asked questions that I get from students is about retention, retention of knowledge, how to improve their memory. So the first thing that I'd like to clarify is that the FE Electrical and Computer as well as the PE Power Exam is not really a test of your memory. It is a test of your competency in the areas that are outlined in the specifications. But as we know, that having a good memory is always a plus. Although you have access to the NCS FE Reference Handbook and the P Power Reference Handbook, but if you know exactly which formula you need to look for, and maybe even if you memorize the formula, it will save you a little bit of time. Although it's not something that I recommend to go out of your way to memorize things, but as I said, having a good memory at any stage of our career and during the exam preparation is always a plus. So in this video, we are going to go over seven very specific techniques that can help you improve your memory and improve your retention. But before we dive into the content, I would really appreciate if you could like this video and subscribe to the channel and click the bell icon if you haven't already done so. So as you probably know, we have two types of memories. One is the long-term memory and the other one is a short-term memory. So whatever I'm telling you right now, whatever you're listening to is being stored in your short-term memory. And until and unless you make a conscious effort to lock this information and move it over to the long-term memory, it is not going to stick around for a long period of time. Our memory storage in the brain works by forming associations. The more emotional, clear, and heightened, the greater the chances that the memory is going to be stored in the long-term memory. That's why it is important to take notes, develop associations, have an immersive attitude towards learning, because the more senses you engage during the learning process, the greater the chances that it will stay longer in your long-term memory, and you would be able to recall it more effectively. So why do most of us complain that our memory is not that great? Whatever we are trying to recall, whether it is something that we recently learned or a name of a person that we came across, the reason we are not able to recall is because at that point in time, we were not really paying a lot of attention. We were not fully focused on that piece of information. So if you were distracted, the chances of you being able to recall that are very low. And that's why distractions are so damaging. In this video, we are going to go over seven strategies that are going to help you improve your knowledge retention, ability to focus, and also to recall the information that you are learning as part of your exam preparation. Strategy number one is to summarize. In an earlier video, I've actually gone over how taking notes can help you with your memory retention and help you fast track your exam preparation. The idea is not to reiterate essentially what you're learning when you're going through my lectures or through the study guide or the other books or resources that you're using or simply rewriting the formulas that are provided in the NCS FE Reference Handbook or the P Power Reference Handbook. The idea is to make notes of some of the key points where basically you're engaging your mind to filter out information that is not required and zone in on the information that is important. The more engaged and immersive you are in the learning process, the greater are the chances of you being able to effectively recall the content when you need it the most. Tip number two is to avoid multitasking. Multitasking is counterproductive because you're taxing your mental capacities you are overexerting your short-term memory and it really causes overhead work when you're switching from one task to another task to another task. So it's a very inefficient way of especially learning something new and make your environment such that the chances of you being distracted are very low. So put your phone away, make sure that on your screen when you're learning something, either from the course or the books or on your desk, only things that are relevant to your study session are there and everything else has been shut out. Tip number three is to focus on high yield content, or in other words, focus on things that really matter, focus on things that are relevant for the exam. Now you might be asking yourself as to how you can basically go about knowing what is important and what is not important. The first thing that I recommend students 
The first temptation to avoid is to skip content. Don't skip anything from the exam specification, even if you're pressed for time. Now, if you really have to make judgment call and if you have only a few hours left, then focus on things that you can grasp quickly. But if you have given yourself a fighting chance, a few months to prepare for both FE electrical and computer exam, as well as the P power exam, then you should not skip anything. On the other hand, your focus should be on things that are relevant. So studying smartly and focusing on high yield content basically means that learning what is necessary for the exam and trying to filter out all the noise. You can do that by going through a course. I have an on-demand FE exam, electrical and computer exam preparation course, which contains 150 lectures and it contains tons of mini exams, practice problems, where I sort of handhold you through all the knowledge areas and the theoretical explanations. You can also make use of resources such as the study guide and the practice exams. And you should also be familiarizing yourself with the NCS FE reference handbook, the relevant sections. And the same is true for my B-Power on-demand course. It contains over 100 lectures, quizzes, a lot of in-lecture practice problems, where I focus on things that are really relevant for the exam based on the latest NCS B-Power exam specification. So if you're using effective exam preparation resources, it can be a game changer because now every minute that you're spending during your study sessions, it is increasing your progress, it is increasing your competency and proficiency that can help you pass this exam in the first attempt. Tip number four is to know your learning style and also which learning style is most effective for the topic that you're trying to learn. A lot of students tell me that they're visual learners and they like the ability to turn on a lecture, turn off the lecture at any given time, skim back and forth between different explanations, different practice problems, and they can actually bounce to quizzes and mini exams. They basically dictate what they want to learn, when they want to learn, and how they want to learn. There are other students who are very comfortable using books. For example, my study guides and practice exams, they are more adaptive to learning from the books rather than maybe from the courses or from videos. So it all depends what your learning style is. Maybe combining the two uh, can also provide you best of both worlds, but that is something that you have to figure out on your own. The second and probably the more important thing is to realize which strategy you want to deploy uh, for a given topic. So let me give you an example. If you're learning a complicated concept and if it's been a while that you've done circuit analysis, then just taking um, notes on a flashcard won't cut it. Flashcard memorization will help you for superficial sort of popcorn questions that are factual. But circuit analysis and a lot of topics in electrical and computer engineering especially are more in depth. They really require you to sort of grasp the underlying theory and to be able to sort of act upon it and to connect different points. That requires you being engaged with the content, figuring things out, looking at the solution, going through the practice problems, trying to make sense of the mathematical formula. So it's it's more in depth. So just taking notes on flashcards is not going to be helpful. So if a topic is fairly high level, superficial, then you can deploy strategy A. And if it requires more in-depth and immersive learning, then you cannot use strategy A. You have to use strategy B in order to fully learn it and then eventually being able to recall the concept or the relevant formulas or the method of solving a problem. Tip number five is to eliminate disruptions. Now, I've already spoken about the negative impact of disruptions on memory retention and how it can decrease your quality of learning. It can bring about inefficiencies during your exam preparation. You might be spending four hours taking notes, you're going through the process, you're going through all the motions, but in reality, you're only studying two hours because every time there is a notification on your cell phone or an email pops up on your computer screen or somebody calls you for something, it takes a little bit of time to get back into the zone. So there's overhead involved when you're multitasking and switching between different activities because of these disruptions. So remove your cell phone, shut out all of the extra tabs that you have open and make sure that only the books that are relevant for your study session are there. So eliminate disruptions. And this is something that can be done or should be done in fact, before you start your studying. So let's say you plan on studying early in the morning, then before you go to bed at night, make sure that your study area is completely free of all disruptions so that when you wake up in the morning, you can 
easily get into the zone and without having to worry about okay my cell phone is here or that book is not the desk doesn't look clean or where's my pen or where's my calculator there's a very interesting book called atomic habits by james clear which i would highly recommend you to uh, consider he has a newsletter as well an email course which you can sign up for as well and he talks about a lot of interesting tips that can help you improve your level of productivity tip number six is exercising. What is the link between exercise and memory retention? Well, there's a very strong link because when you exercise, there's an increased flow of blood towards your brain. And there's a lot of research that is going on that shows that there's a very strong mind-body connection in humans. And that is the reason why, in addition to the physical benefits of exercise, a lot of mental Benefits are also coming about, such as increased focus, reduced depression levels, and so on and so forth. Tip number seven is to reduce your stress level. Our body produces a hormone called cortisol whenever we are stressed. This hormone sort of impacts short-term memory retention, and it is not very helpful for our goal of focusing and effectively recall what we've learned. In summary, if you want to improve your knowledge retention, you have to be very mindful of these seven tips that we've discussed. And if you can deploy them effectively and in sync, then they're going to help you with your overall exam preparation, make the journey less stressful, make the journey more enjoyable. Because at the end of the day, FE Electrical and Computer Exam and P Power Exam are a huge undertaking. And if you do everything right or as best as possible, then there is a high chance that you're gonna pass the exam in first attempt. And if you're looking for effective exam preparation resources to help streamline your exam preparation effort, I would recommend you to check out my FE Electrical and Computer exam preparation course, as well as a P Power exam preparation course in the description of this video.